Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Almighty God, you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, be prepared for those who love you, such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Revelation. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the, the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God, of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will sh worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to Judas, not Iscariot, those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them 
and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Blessed be the name of God. Amen. (sighs) Summer is upon us. For some, it is already here. Travels are underway. David's pal, Flat Jimmy, is getting geared up to hit the road. Y'all be sure to take them with you wherever you go. Facebook already boasts of beach trips. Hello out there, those of you who are already at the beach. Adventures to New York City. Exquisite images of travels abroad. Camp Bratton Green is on the verge of reopening and Mission Experience 2022 is just around the corner for St. James Youth. Itineraries, agendas, and schedules are shifting galore. Ah. With all of that, alongside today's passage from the Book of Acts, about Paul and his traveling companions and their vision quest type detour to Macedonia, it makes me wonder, what is your traveling style, your traveling preference? That is, do you prefer to make detailed plans with each stop carved out, activities and meals set in advance? Or do you prefer to set out with a destination in mind, or maybe even not, and amble your way on the highways and byways, stopping as your whimsy or the interest of your fellow pilgrims call? Perhaps something in between, I suspect. I recall a movie from the early 90s entitled Leaving Normal. It was about these two unlikely traveling mates making their way to Alaska 
to behold the aurora borealis. At each crossroads, they would pull out a map. You remember those, maps, large pieces of paper that unfold and never get folded back correctly again. They would pull out a map, place it on the front of the car, and put their finger down somewhere, or wait for a sign to tell them which route to take next. How comfortable would you be with traveling in that way, on a wing and a prayer, and changing course on the basis of a sign or a vision or wherever your finger lands? Have you ever thought about the fact that we are here in this place because of visions had long ago? Christianity had its beginnings in dreams, signs, and visions. The trajectory of the people of God shifted and turned, took detours, and was transformed by those listening. For the word of God as revealed in visions. How much credence would we give an emerging organization if we knew its origins were based on someone's vision? How likely would we be to take a detour into a strange land amongst strange people? And yet it seems to me that's where we are right here and right now. We are in the midst of a grand detour, a rerouting process, not just here at St. James or even across the church, but our very lives are being rerouted. And not just because of the pandemic or the changes in leadership, both here and at large. My sense is that we are in the midst of a rather significant shift, or as I've phrased it before, a pivot. However, unlike Paul and his friends, our pivot is underway, but we lack a vision. We lack a clear vision, clarity about what, where, and how we are called to be beyond or even in the midst of the shift. There is an unsteadiness, a pervasive lack of trust, a disturbing polarization with which we must contend. We cannot avoid it. We cannot continue to whisper about it beneath our breath. Again, I'm not pointing specifically at St. James. In fact, there's a lot of good energy erupting around here with lots of hearts and hands striving to embrace new life. But beyond our walls, in our homes, our workplaces, our city streets, society at large, our world, there is an uneasiness, a dis-ease in very big ways, as well within our walls to a degree. I suspect you know of what I am speaking. And we have some serious listening to do. We have some serious listening to do. In today's passage from the book of Acts, Lydia, Lydia's heart was opened that she might listen eagerly. Lydia listened. In turn, Paul and his companions listened to Lydia's invitation and generous hospitality. 
Lydia listened, Paul and his companions listened, and the burgeoning Christian community of Philippi was born. Out of the vulnerability of listening came new direction and new life for what would become the Christian community that made us. Out of the vulnerability of listening came new direction and new life. That's part of the wisdom gleaned from today's readings, that we are called to open our ears and open our hearts to listen. It sounds so simple, and yet we know it's not. We are called to listen to one another, to listen for the word from God in our encounters with one another, in nature, in the world. We are called to take a moment of Sabbath time, a time that is not hindered by those to-do lists, travel plans, loud noises, or even your own voice. It is impossible to listen if you are talking. It is impossible to really listen if you are already formulating your response. We are called to find a place of prayer, a place where we can sit down, be quiet, and listen. For it is in the listening that clarity and a vision will come, a sense of direction and what route to take next. It is in the listening that our hearts are cracked open, that we might receive God's outpouring love, that we may love God in all things and above all things. It is in the listening that the broken bonds between those on opposite sides of any disagreement, the fractures in our homes, our communities, will find healing, restoration, and peace. Peace that passes understanding. It is in the listening that we may know God that we may know and share God's mercy and God's blessing. As we step into the shift of the seasons and the shifting of our lives, may we set aside our fears, our certainties, our hunger for busyness, even as we attempt to rest. May we refrain from filling the air with words and noise and if-onlys, if-thens, if-buts. May we get out of our own way, sit under the expansive tree of life, and be vulnerable enough to listen for the word from God that is in all things and above all things and exceeds our every desire if we but listen. Blessed be the name of God. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in God of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. All that is seen and seen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God and Father. God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten not made, one being with the 
the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. Close with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. To come again in glory to pass the heaven and dead, and to his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. The peace of the Lord be always with you. turn again. <laughs> welcome. Welcome one and all. Welcome new faces and renewed faces and welcome to our beautiful children as they return to us to celebrate Holy Communion. I want to call your attention to the announcements in the bulletin. I ask you to read, mark, and inwardly digest them. There's lots of information about upcoming ways to engage and maybe to sit and listen for a bit. I do want to invite you in particular to um, make note of the uh, initial announcement in the bulletin. It's related to something you may have received in the mail. We're asking folks to let us know what you celebrate about St. James. We want to listen to where you are and what you love about St. James and why you're here and what brought you back. And we want to hear about it. And there are little blue cards at every entry and we ask you to fill them out and give them back to us so that we might share that with our greater community. Something about celebrating beckons more celebration. Our Wednesday night suppers are back, speaking of celebrations, and we hope you'll come and join and be with us for a time on Wednesday evenings. You've also noticed that um, those of you who've been here for a while will know that we used to have a votive candle stand over here in this corner, very conveniently located behind all of the chairs. We have moved it over here to this corner where everyone can have access to it. And you might want to take on the practice of lighting a candle in prayer and in thanksgiving and in intercession. I, at some point during the service, even after you've taken communion to stop and light a, ca a candle, a votive candle, um, to help with your reflective um, prayerful life. Please make note of the other announcements in the bulletin. Know that Pentecost is fast approaching and there will be a festive celebration that morning as well as festal evening song that evening. We still have ferns, please buy them. <laughs> I hear tell we also have some pork loins that have been cooked. They are also for sale for $15. We'd like for you to buy those too. They're frozen. They haven't been sitting around for weeks on end. <laughs> What does the Lord require but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God?
Continue on page 372. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And behold, in the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the world under our care. So in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help. So that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you. And through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners' freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his ascent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering you this from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise, praise you, we, we bless you, we give, give thanks to you, you and, and we, we pray, pray to you, Lord our God. God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, 
as a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Michael, our presiding bishop, and Brown, our bishop, all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember those who are known to us who are sick or ill and need our prayers. Remember all those who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them to the place of eternal light and joy. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. James and all your saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. Mm. Body and blood of Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body and blood of Christ, keep an everlasting life. body and blood of Christ, keep you an everlasting life. Okay. Okay. You're doing well, doing a good job. The body and blood of Christ, keep you an everlasting life. The body and blood of Christ keep you an everlasting life. The body and blood of Christ keep you an everlasting life. The body and blood of Christ keep you an everlasting life. The body and blood of Christ keep you an everlasting life. The body and blood of Christ keep you an everlasting life. The body and blood of Christ keep you an everlasting life.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, who graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you leave this place, go forth in peace. Be assured that the past is forgiven, though the future is in God's hands. Return to no person evil for evil. Remember the poor, pray for the sick, and make no peace with injustice in this world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.